Hogan. I'm with uh, Paradigm Partners. We're a consulting firm in Cambridge. Uh, we specialize in high performance roofing and all these emerging market technologies that have been presented to you and how they really integrate with that rooftop space as a platform. Uh, challenges and opportunities. What I've particularly been asked to speak about tonight is to put myself in your shoes to understand how stakeholders can start to kind of you know, make sense of everything that's been presented to you in, in uh, panel number one. What technology works for me? Where do I begin? Who do I engage from the service sector to help identify which solution really makes sense for uh, my property and for the people who use that property? Um, and I would just really encourage everyone to really engage this from a situational analysis standpoint where you're really looking to identify three specific data sets about the building, right? And the first really is to understand the owner and the occupant. You know, who uses the building? What is the building used for? How is the, uh, how do the occupants, uh, you know, size up what their personal goals are, what their professional goals are, how relevant are a lot of these different solutions to how they actually utilize that building space. And that we find is the most important data set to really establish what the needs are because it really is about the people. Uh, then you can really quickly move on to how the building is, right? And that's systems, functions, features, opportunities. And our inventory in New England, as you all know, I don't need to tell you this, it's so mature. Very rarely do we work on a project or a property that is the same as another building. And I'm sure for you folks who own buildings, operate buildings, use buildings, you find the same things. Property inventories are very diverse in New England, right? So you really need to engage the building to understand what the opportunities are. And then third, the third data set you really want is the energy, right? And that tends to be the most simple data to produce, right? It's what type, how much, what it's used for, and what it costs, right? The different users have their energy consumption structured in very different methods, all right? But in most cases, the data is really relevant and easy to get to. After you guys as building owners have kind of established these three core data sets, you know, then you can start to engage the building itself and really take what I think every panelist on panel one has clearly identified, a common sense approach to the building. You know, John used the reference PV is the icing on the building and he used that great case study at Boston Sand and Gravel where a lot of the energy management solutions for the property were integrated systems that required a lot of specialty services and contractors to make the things actually work. From a very foundational basis, the best way to approach a building is to deal with its efficiency. The way air and heat and cold transfer through the five walls of a building. And when we talk about a building having five walls, right, four of them go this way and one goes this way, all right? And that fifth wall is, I think, as Kairos really pointed out, is, is one of these untapped opportunities that happens in life cycle management of a building. Roofs get redone. Very rarely do structural walls get redone. Roofs get redone every 20 years. People tend to work on roofs. They're upfitting equipment and technology on roofs. It makes complete sense to really try to maximize this as an opportunity. Second, you kind of engage how the building uses energy. So we look at technologies, you know, like Jim pointed out, and engineered skylights, things that help us reduce the amount of energy that a building uses, right? So there's a whole set of different technology that can fit in that bit. And then finally, you can really have a building that's ready to approach creating energy, right? And that's when we get into a lot of the really heavily subsidized and really attractive kind of high profile solutions like hot water, like PV, micro wind, I think, or building mounted wind is something we're gonna see a lot of endeavor in in the next five to 10 years. And then we've kind of cleared through the common sense approach to where we can create solutions as a building owner that you folks can identify and say, okay, we have A, B, and C, they fit into these three distinct bins, and uh, you know, now I have some information about how I can really procure the solution that's right for my building. This is a conventional construction method, right? This is the delivery. And, you know, there's a lot of theorists and theories talking about how construction projects actually get delivered uh, in, in our industry today. I think what you see by and large is many people are used to the design, bid, build scenario that um, a construction project gets delivered into. And what we've realized, I think, today, and it just is reaffirmed for me over and over again, is that these systems 
all involve multiple trades to come together. We're using one trade as a platform. We're using other different specialty trades based on what the technology is. And it really creates the need for an integrated team. You couple the diversity of the delivery model with a mature building infrastructure, and it makes it very challenging to simply design and specify a system, hand it to a contractor, contractor can go bid it out to a number of different subcontractors and kind of deliver a project. Um, the emerging method that I think really can give some great opportunity to understand the true financial benefits of these emerging market technologies is this integrated design build. It, and there's a lot of different taglines it has. There's integrated project delivery, there's the design build. At the end they really strive for the same thing and that really is populating the project life cycle very heavy at the beginning of the process, okay? So we, we start with this conceptual, which is typically how design work starts too. We have conceptual opportunities that we've identified out of the situational analysis process that you folks have just gone through. And then we're identifying the specialists who can come in and start to understand from a cost budget standpoint how these systems actually get installed, right? And that's when specialty installation firms are going to get engaged, give proposals, and that's when what most important about this is this is when they identify what their installation hurdles are going to be. And when we're retrofitting mature building inventory with emerging market technology, every project has interconnection hurdles. Whether it's a vegetative roof, a daylighting system, PV, hot water, every building has a unique hurdle to overcome. What this process does a really good job at eliminating it is, is the following. And you have to understand, the reason people buy these emerging market technologies as a building owner is because it's an investment. You're making an investment to realize a reduction in energy cost primarily. There's a lot of other environmental and social benefits that tend to be key drivers, but we really need to focus on how the return on investment gets delivered functionally as it was described to you folks when you made a buying decision. This process eliminates change orders at the end of a construction process. And a change order, for those of you who've never run into this, is when two different contractors stand on the roof and point at each other and say, no, no, he owns that. I don't own that. And then they look at the contract and guess what? No one owns it. So when you deliver a system with integrated components through integrated design bill, ownership and responsibility of the task to get the project done happens before the contract is negotiated and finalized. So pretty quickly, I just wanted to walk you folks through a case study, um, and this is very typical. Uh, this is a client of ours in Pedham, and the initial engagement was what? I want solar. Okay, great. That's great. Let's go talk about solar. Um, and what we went through in the situational analysis process was pretty interesting. Uh, this client is a big energy user. Why? Because he makes ice in his building 12 months a year. Um, it's an owner-occupied structure. We got to understand really what his financial drivers are as a small business owner, which really is what made the energy case and drove the solutions that he ultimately took advantage of. And because he uses so much energy, as a building owner, he's really aware of what his data is. He has energy data to the degree, to the hour, to the day, of what the building was producing 12 months ago, 24 months ago. So, so we were able to kind of populate those three data sets really quickly and then come up with a few conceptual solutions of different things he could do to manage his energy. And they really fell into three bins. So right, this is the building owner who wants solar. Well, what he really wants to do is control his energy costs so he can make more money when he sells a, an hour of ice time. That's what's most important to him. So we came back with a few different solutions for him and one is to do this to the building, right? Thermal imaging, okay? And what we can identify here is that kind of efficiency stand where you can look at how heat and cold, and in this case, air as well, by where the heat is, transfer through the walls, and in particular on this building, the roof. Um, the second thing we put together for him was uh, a roofing system that had the optimized level of insulation value. You heard people speak about that on panel one. Had a reflective roof surface and was designed to be PV ready, right? PV, 25 year, 30 year business case investment. If you're building roofing, you have to make sure that you're building structures that can last as long as a long-term asset investment like PV can. 
And then the third scenario that he got to take a look at involved about $800,000 in capital expenses out of his pocket, and that was to put a PV array on his roof. Um, so pretty quickly, the way this went for him was he went the spray foam insulation route right away. And he said, you know what, this makes a lot of sense. I'm going to work on my efficiency. Um, the data here is that he saved nine degrees Fahrenheit year to year day to day. Uh, so he was able to go back in his records and through an insulation project at the roof to wall detail on a pretty old metal building, he was able to cut his energy costs and get a payback on what he looked at as 15 months, right? And he budgets for a PV ready roof that uh, will pay back in about 15 years, okay? And we from the roofing business have a very hard time dollarizing the payback of the roof. Uh, and he's got a platform then that's solar ready, okay? So we can have the right technology on the right platform when he's financially ready to talk about creating energy. So that's a pretty quick case study on how you, you populate each step in that process, but uh, most importantly, you feel is really identifying that data and then taking that data and being able to engage the variety of service providers who can kind of help you guys navigate a lot of these complex solutions that are out there. Thanks, Cameron. I don't Mike. Okay, next we have Adam Wade from Foley Hoag. Um, Adam counsels developers of solar and wind-powered renewable energy generation projects in negotiation and documentation.